to share with you some of the costumes that I have with me. So these costumes, they were used for dancing or anytime we have a ceremony, like a wedding, any big celebration. Um, now obviously I wear it for performing mostly. This one was from 2006 when we, my cousins and I perform at Rainforest Festival. And actually, in the past, it was quite typical for us to have a very simple design on the border um, with these type of beads, not sequins. And in that time, I think in the 90s, we used velvet a lot. I, I don't know why, again, but I think because it was very easy to work with. Because takan in the kampong, you know, back then, we didn't have velvet, right? when we moved to the cities. Um, so yeah, velvet's quite easy to work with. It doesn't fray. And this one has a high slit because we used to wear um, leggings underneath um, because we were playing sape. So that was kind of a style we were experimenting with. And we just wore a plain black top. This one was also around 2000. Or maybe 2006. It's made with um, mother of pearl shells, and this was my mom's idea. It was her project because way back in the past, uh, we used cowrie cowrie shells, um, which is a different type of shell. So obviously, because we live so far away from the seaside, these shells would only be obtained through trade. Uh, so it was a big kind of effort to then put it on your costume. This is so barat. It's so heavy. Which is why I don't wear it anymore, especially if not for playing up it because it's quite uncomfortable. But it looks beautiful. This this was designed by the pot the Pun Bawang. He is um, a late grand uncle. Kind of reminds me of the Hornbill, but I'm not sure why or how he designed it um, because he had already passed away then. Again, this is on velvet. So, this is the more common one that I think you guys would be more familiar with. Again, this is on velvet. This is just a wrap around someone. This style is usually made in Indonesia and uh, people in Sarawak and Malaysia buy it from them. It's actually quite interesting because this kind of designs and uh, putting the kalong, so in Kenya we call it we call designs in general, we call it kalong. And what's interesting is that it's actually it's not an old fashion to put the kalong onto skirts. So this only happened in the 1960s. And especially using sequins, that's relatively new. In the past, we used to use, yeah, we just used to have simple ones on the border, like beads, or we would have applique on the border, um, patchwork on the border, basically whatever materials we had back then, which wasn't a lot of choice. Uh, one of my aunties told me that they used to have like red material brought from the coast, um, traveling weeks into the forest, into the village where they lived and then they would, from that red material, they would make thread and one of our first costumes was just red thread on, um, on black kain and the, the skirt was actually quite short. So this is the matching top. This is good. It's the back of the top. So very bling bling. And this was gifted to me by um, Sina Arantuan. She was um, the she, she's the late wife of our late headman, and I was quite close to her as a child. She taught me how to weave, and um, yeah, she has a very special place in my heart. And I was so touched when she gave me this costume because um, you know they're not very cheap. And you know, it's so funny because this is her costume and she's so much smaller than me. She was like up to here. So this costume like comes up to here for me. 
I had to clean, whenever I had to wash. So even if you send them to dry cleaners, sometimes they don't know how to deal with it. And I made the mistake, because uh, this is a different quality of velvet, so even if water touches it, it becomes like this. I don't know if you can see. You get this kind of effect. So that's all the bulu or the hair is coming off. So I actually did it. <laughs> it, it all water came on all of this. So I bought fringe and I added fringes here. So I don't know, at least it adds a bit of movement. <laughs> yeah. And I had to add this on also because it was becoming a bit patchy. But it looks okay, right? I think from stage, if I'm far away, you can't really tell. Except now I've told all of you. <laughs> so sometimes I even like just wear this with um, black jeans, like ripped jeans and a tank top inside. So similarly, there's this red one which my mum bought for me last year. We just bought it on the main bazaar in Kuching. I wanted something bright because I always wear black. Again, it's wrap around skirt. Um, probably from Indonesia as well. And that's on red velvet. The matching top. I wore this one at the World Tourism Conference last year to dance in. I wear this one. I wear this in. This one I wore in Taipei, Taiwan last year uh, for our album launch. This skirt, I like this one. It's um, quite simple. It's not on velvet. So, as a child, whenever we had to wear our velvet costumes because the top was also velvet, we would always get so, so hot backstage, and especially when you're dancing. So this kind now is a, is a polyester and it's a lot more comfortable to wear. This costume, the top, you can see it's kind of like a kabaya style top with um, the beads on, it's very simple design. And this was actually a costume given to my mother by Sina Rem's mother who has now um, passed on and because I would get more wear out of it my mum passed it on to me and I wear this one quite a lot I really like it um, I wore it I wore, I've worn it a lot I wore it at Wonder Fruit Festival I wore it to perform at um, UN Day and lots of other places this is like a tenth of all my costumes by the way <laughs> I still have the ones from when I was like six years old. Okay, this costume it was given to me two years ago by Auntie Ramat, my dad's sister. She bought it in Barrio uh, from one of the aunties that made it um, over there. So this is very typical of the aunties um, skirts. She does it in different colors. This again is on the polyester and that's um, applique with satin and edged with beads. Beautiful. So this one, I don't have a matching top. I just tend to wear any black top and always, always with a lot of beaded accessories. This is a bark cloth jacket. It's made from tree bark. And this tree bark is very typical of uh, tribes throughout Borneo and also through Polynesia. In many Polynesian islands, they call it tapa. Nowadays, this is mostly linked with the male's warrior costume for the Orangulu people. But actually, in the past, the women also wore this. This was just what we had for clothes. So this one was um, painted by my sape master, uh, Uncle Matthew, Uncle Matthew Ngao and it was sewn by his wife, Victoria. So this one I just wear with it. Uh, any skirt that I think goes, or sometimes just a plain black skirt that I got from Forever 21. And um, I wore this Taiwan at a festival there. The thing is, it's because it's a bit stiff, it's a bit hard when I play the sape and try to move around. I also wear a lot of sarongs, just, you know, usual type of 
uh, Thain Sarong that we get. This one was the first one I had. It was a gift from Tracy Ann when I was 16 and I still wear it now. And yeah, because actually, even though like you arrive, they're Indonesian, Batik or Malaysian or you know, from wherever, that's what we wear in the kampong, right? Uh, so yeah, wear that with any plain top and my beads also. And nowadays, if you go to Main Bazaar in Kuching, we have the, um, the Kenyah, the Orang Ulu designs on the sarong and I just get them sewed up. This one I got made last year. This is actually a design by the late Tusa Padan. Tusa Padan was um, just a legendary sape player uh, who passed away in the 90s. And his sape and his um, original paintings are now collectibles. So you can buy fabric, mostly from Fabrico in Kuching. Uh, yeah, so this is one of his Tree of Life designs. I just got a skirt made and a matching corset top. I wore it with a white top when I was at a festival in Panama earlier this year. And finally, um, these are pants, like really baggy pants, <laughs> that I um, got made last year. Again, the fabric I bought uh, in Fabrico in Kuching. And these are designs from weaving patterns. So you'd find them on baskets or on mats typically um, throughout the Orang Ulu community. And I have a matching top for it. So I wore this outfit um, at the Oz Asia Festival in Adelaide, Australia last year. So yeah, I think I have a lot of fun playing around with costumes lately and um, you know, trying to play around with the idea of traditional and contemporary because, because actually our costumes are not that old. If you think about it, in the recent past, we didn't have fabrics and we didn't have sequins and, uh, or we didn't have such a range of them. So yeah, I think it's been really fun and interesting. I think other Orangulu and Dayak ladies also you know, have a lot of fun uh, playing around with different costumes and ideas. And yeah, all of these costumes are always, always, always pair with our beaded accessories. So that's gonna be in a different video. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions, just type them out in the comments below and I'll try to answer.